Hey, hello, my name is Aleš. I'm a front-end developer at Xerox, and I'm here to give you a walkthrough of some of the features so you can get a basic idea of what Xerox is about and hopefully give it a try at the beginning of May when we are releasing it to the public for the first time as an early access. Now, before we jump to Xerox itself, let's first take a look at the project we'll be setting up and define uh, goals a developer might have with such project. As you can see, our project is hosted on GitHub. Uh, what you can't quite see is that it is a monorepository, which means there could be multiple applications or libraries inside. In our case, there are two applications. The first is called API and it's a Nest.js application. Uh, and as the name implies, it will be our backend. The second application is called client and it's an Angular application and it will be our frontend. There are two things we need to know about our API. The first is that it is using MongoDB as database and it is expecting to find the connection string under environment variable connection string. The second is that it is also working as a static server for our front end, so there is no need for any additional web server. Okay, so to recap, what will we need? We will need a Node.js service, we will need MongoDB database, we will need uh, to set up build and deploy pipeline to build and deploy both of our applications. And ideally, we will want two environments. First, production, that will be public under our custom domain. And second, development, which, will, which we will use either as stage or to help us with our local development. So that's pretty much it. Let's jump to Xerops and see how to set it all up there. Right, we are inside Xerops with a fresh new account, so we are ready to add the first project. We'll begin with our production environment, so let's name the project scrollbar web prod as in production and click add. API uses MongoDB as database, so let's start by selecting MongoDB service and giving it host name DB. Xerops creates a secure private network for each project, so other services inside the project will be able to access this database by its host name and the port it is running on. Since this is supposed to be our production, let's turn on high availability. This means that Xerops will run the database on at least three hardware separated containers. And that's all we needed to do to add MongoDB. You can see two processes showed up and that is because Xerops along the first service will also add a core service to our project. Uh, core service will take care of securing the connection between the internet and the project and also store logs and statistics for all services inside the project. Uh, I'll just let it do its thing and add our Node.js service meanwhile. So I'm selecting Node.js service, I'll leave the version at latest and since this will be both our backend and frontend, let's give it a generic hostname app. I'll leave the port on 3000, which is the default port of Nest.js and most Node.js applications in general. Let's fill in the start command, which in our case is simply npm start. And as I mentioned in the beginning, our API application is expecting to find connection string to our database under environment variable connection string. So let's add that. I could write down the connection string myself, but Xerops creates a connection string environment variable for each service of database type automatically. So I can simply reference the one on our DB service. We do want our service to be in high availability mode. And let's connect it with my GitHub repository. This is production, so we want to trigger the pipeline on a new tag slash release. And as the last step, we need to let Xerops know how to build our application by adding xerops.yaml file to the root of our application. I have already done that, so let's give it a quick look. 
Both API and client applications are built using Node.js, so we are telling Xerops to use Node.js as a base build container. To build our application, we want to first run npm install to install dependencies, and then npm run build production, which will consecutively build both of our applications. After these commands are successfully done running, I want to deploy a dist folder, node modules folder, and package JSON file. Let's jump back to Xerops and finish adding our service. Click add. Go to service list. And we can see that our database is already up and running and our Node.js service is waiting for us to trigger the build and deploy pipeline. Now before I do that, let me speed run through adding the development version of the project, which will for most parts be the same. So scroll bar, web, dev, MongoDB, hostname db. This is development, so we don't really need high availability. Now, Node.js service, hostname app, leave the port, npm start, connection string environment variable with reference to db connection string. Again, development, so no high availability. Connect with GitHub repository. And this time, since this is development, let's trigger the pipeline on push to branch main. Okay, uh, that is all. We now should be ready to trigger both of our builds. So let's go back to GitHub and start by creating a new release. Ah, let's also commit a change to the main branch. That's all, let's go back to Xerops. As you can see, two build processes showed up, one for each of our projects. Now, Xerops build process has three steps. The first is to create a build container, which in our case will be a clean Linux container with Node.js already pre-installed for us, as that is what we defined in the Xerops.yaml. The second step is to run our build commands. And the last step is to pick up the files and folders we defined in Xerops.yaml and deploy them to our runtime service. After the deployment phase is done, Xerops will then start our application by running the start command we defined while adding the service. Uh, in case of our two applications, this whole process will take about five minutes. So let's just speed things up and watch the build log meanwhile. Okay, so the build and deploy pipeline is done for our production project and should be done for our development. Ah, there. So the last thing left for us to do is to make our uh, projects public. Uh, we can do that by going to routing settings of our app service. Now, Xerops allows you to make your service public by three different ways. First is by using Xerops subdomain, which we are doing now. The second is by adding a custom domain, which we will do later for our production project. And the last way is by direct access through an unique IP address assigned to the project. While the subdomain is being enabled, let's take a quick look on a diagram of a project with all three different ways enabled and see how traffic would flow through it.
So the direct APSS a connection would first go through a core service where an L3 balancer would split it between different service containers. In case of a subdomain or a custom domain, L3 balancer would first send it through an L7 HTTP balancer, which A handles SSL certificates for us and B splits the connection depending on location rules we set up between different services and their containers. As you can see, Zerops, uh, despite looking quite simple on the inside, has a pretty serious infrastructure on the inside, and it is built to be perfectly capable of handling anything from a simple Gemstack site on a static web server to huge distributed systems with millions of users. Let's jump back to Zerops and finish by adding the custom domain access and taking the last look around. Okay, looks like our subdomains were enabled meanwhile, so let's visit both and make sure that our applications work. Production seems to be working fine. And development works as well. So the last thing we need to do is to add our custom domain. So let's go back to routing. and set up the first domain access. We'll start by getting ourselves a unique IPv4 address assigned to the project. And then using it as an A record in our domain's DNS. Let's go back to Zerops, uh, get rid of these notifications and add our domain, which is scrollbar.io. Now, if I had another domain like scrollbar.com, I could also add it here, but I don't have it, so let's just remove it right away. I want for Zerops to automatically install SSL certificate for me. Now, if I had another service inside my project, like say one that would handle administration, I could add another uh, location rule and slash admin would point to the other service. I don't, so let's just remove it and add our domain access. Zerops allows you to queue up multiple changes, but since this is the only one we'll be making, I'll just publish it right away. Now we only recently changed the DNS record, so this might take a ah, never mind. DNS is already okay, so it's pointing to our IP address, and Zerops is installing the SSL certificate for us. And it is done, our domain should be now working, so let's give it a try. And it works. Before we end the walkthrough, let's click through some other pages inside service detail. So on dashboard, we can see the total amount of resources allocated to this service and their current usage. Below we can see the three containers that are inside our service and their allocated resources and their current usage. Zerops is able to automatically and intelligently scale up and down both horizontally and vertically. In case of Node.js, which can only utilize a single thread, it would keep adding and removing new containers. We can click through a runtime log of each container. Builds and deploys page shows the active version that's running on all containers. Zerops keeps the older versions archived and I could switch between them if I wanted and if I had any. And in service variables we can edit or add new environment variables. Runtime log we have already seen and that's it. And that's it, we have our production with database running in high availability with app service running in high availability that is public under our custom domain 
and our development environment that is public under Zrops subdomain. We can see the core stack with L3 balancer and L7 HTTP balancer on each project. And that's all. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please join our Discord or follow us on Twitter or GitHub or LinkedIn. Bye bye.